Hi everybody, Mark here from PondAlgaeSolutions.com and in this video I want to go over a email that I got in just recently and it contains some good questions and um, I just wanted to share it and my reply for Daniel who is dealing with some algae problems in a recently uh, cleaned out pond and uh, I think this will be helpful for people in the same boat. So he wrote in and he said, I have a 60 by 30 by six foot deep backyard pond with algae problems, string algae, top layer of scum, slime, all kinds of stuff. We had just drained it and all the sludge was removed and now the algae is growing back. We put in blue dye in to block the sun. Now we need hydrogen peroxide to kill the rest. What is the best question? Pellets, granule, liquid, peroxide, and at what amount should we use any of the products? So I replied to Daniel that, first of all, it's not unusual to do a full clean out of a pond, drain, uh, vacuum, uh, you know, remove all the muck, sludge, debris, refill the pond, and then see algae come back very quickly. It's not unusual because the pond has not had any time to establish any kind of balance again. Uh, natural occurring microbes that would normally come in there or if you're putting plants in to help um, with keeping algae at bay, which can be useful, they may not be full bloom, in full bloom, or may not be up to full speed yet. So it's not uncommon to see algae get the jump when you start to refill and start a pond up again. And in his case, he is looking to try to deal with the issue more immediately and more promptly. And by the way, the clean out is a great idea. Cleaning up that bottom is going to help a lot in time. But understand that the pond just needs time to reset itself. Now, I do think that his idea of using a peroxide type algicide has some merit in the sense that it doesn't contain copper, it's very short lived and it will probably knock the algae down. But I do have a problem with it at this stage, and I'm not sure if it's the best fit for his situation. Here's why. So these peroxide algicides are contact-based algicides. You have to apply them over the algae. It's caustic, it fizzes, and then it'll damage the algae, outer cell membrane, and it'll kill the stuff. But you have to reapply it a lot of times over and over again to really work the mass down. And the other part of this is that because it has no residuality, it turns to oxygen and water really quick, I mean within seconds. And so it has no residuality to keep algae from blooming again in short order. So my vision for him is that he would treat the stuff and knock it down, but there's a real good chance that the algae could come back pretty quickly. And so is that product the best investment to make at this stage? Uh, dye, eh, it could be useful, but it is not going to be a main line deterrent for algae in a lot of cases. may be useful in a shallower pond like this, especially for underwater weed growth, but it's not the first thing I would go to. In his case, the very first thing I would do after I refilled the pond is probably supplement some beneficial microbes in there, beneficial bacteria. Something in our case like the Biosphere Pro product that we use, and I would dose it fairly aggressively. And what you want to do is just jumpstart this natural microbial uh, infusion, if you will, to help start dealing with the nutrients that are feeding this algae growth and just get things established and try to move the pond more quickly to balance. You could add plants in a pond this size and probably get some good benefit from them. Surface-based plants would be useful, but um, I think he would be well off using a microbial to start with. That will take care of, by the way, if the nutrients can come down, that algae that he has could regress. It's very possible. If he couldn't get that to happen, I would personally try to remove it using an algae rake or something, a skimmer, uh, if it's at all feasible, if the mass is there to work with, because getting that stuff out is important. If he just killed it with an algicide, the stuff goes right back to the bottom and starts to decay and rot again. And Again, I, I think at this stage, it's probably better to just live with the algae short term. Don't get too freaked out about it. Get some microbials in the pond and start that process. 
down the road, if you want to add dye, yeah, maybe you could add dye, but there's, there's kind of pros and cons to that stuff, especially if you're trying to establish a very healthy, broad ecosystem of, you know, some diatom activity and food chain activity for fish and things. And so dye isn't the worst thing in the world. Most, if not all of it now is food grade quality, but it does affect the pond environment a little bit and may not be the best option to keeping growth down. But, um, uh, Peroxides, let me touch on those real quick. Again, they can be very short-lived. I'm not saying that they aren't useful at times. If you're trying to do a very quick knockdown of a well-established pond, or let's say you have an event, something of importance, and you've got to have a pond looking pretty good in short order, sure. A peroxide-based algaecide could be really helpful here because, again, we're not using copper. We don't have the residuality issues of copper. We just do a simple knockdown. Um, maybe the algae isn't widespread and we just take it out. It could be useful there. Uh, it is very useful on waterfall areas, rocks, streams, things that are harder to treat in other ways that can be really good there. Even spray on uh, liquid peroxide can be useful. So I'm not knocking the use of it. It's just that in this particular case, I think there might be better options. So anyway, I hope that helps. Daniel, I hope that helps you. And if you have any other questions about your pond or pond algae management, get in touch with us at pondalgiesolutions.com. We'll be happy to help, and I hope you have a great day wherever you are.